Hey guys, everyone talks about CO2 emissions nowadays, but do you know how easy it is to compute and then visualize CO2 emissions per capita for any country in the world? In today's tutorial, I will show you how you can do that on the example of the subnational units of Germany, which accounts for 25% of CO2 emissions within the European Union. So in this tutorial, we'll be doing several things. First of all, we'll be fetching the global CO2 emissions data from the Edgar version 8 dataset. Then we'll be getting as a second step population data from the global human settlement layer. And then as a third step, we'll be using zonal statistics to calculate global CO2 emissions over a certain subnational units of Germany and produce some really awesome. Welcome back. In this tutorial, our first step is to install and then load the packages that we need. Here, I'm going to define a list of libraries that we need as libs. And the first one is the umbrella package tidyverse, which we'll be using for data wrangling and data visualization. The second one is the geodata package, which we will use to fetch the subnational boundaries of uh, the Netherlands. The third one is Terra. Since we will be working with raster files, Terra is the way to go. We will also be calculating zonal statistics for both the population and greenhouse uh, gas emissions. So for that purpose, we'll be using exact extract R. Okay. Apart from this, we'll be also using asset package since we'll be working with shapefiles. And finally, we'll also be using class int package for getting uh, the cut points for our values. Now that we have this list of libraries, the first thing that we need to check if these libraries are indeed installed. So we're just going to use this list libs and they're going to go through the row names of already installed uh, packages. Now, if they are not installed, we need to write here an if else statement. So if any of these install libs equals false, in other words, if they're not installed, then we open this query brackets and then we tell R to install packages. But we don't need all of the packages. We need those uh, from the list of libs that are not among the installed libs. And then the last thing here that we want to do is to add uh, actually the dependencies to also install if it's needed. So dependencies equals true. Now that we installed uh, the packages we need, the very last thing is to load them into our session. So that is also pretty much straightforward. What we need to do is simply apply a uh, library uh, function to the list of libs. So the library function in R is used for loading packages into R. In order to get the population data, we will be using global human settlement layer or GHSL. And the first thing will be to get this data. If you're not familiar how to get this data, here is how you can do that. So we are back at the GHSL website, where which we used in one of the previous tutorials for fetching the population data. And this time we're going to be fetching again the global population uh, data set. So uh, the first thing here is to navigate to the GHS pop data set. So you click just on this icon on the left hand side. And this is going to offer us the GHS population grid for 2023, of course, the latest one. Uh, we're going to go ahead and for the epoch here, choose 2020. And then we have here several options for the resolution. So we can either go with the uh, this one, which is using meters or the standard WGS84, which is using arc seconds. So you can either choose three arc seconds, which is actually very fine grained. It's a large file, or you can go with 30 arc seconds. So I'm just going to go with 30 arc seconds here. We chose all that. And then you can see here global download file. It's a single file for you know a single country so that we don't actually patch together everything. We can simply uh, download this one. So what you can either do is click now on this uh, downloads global file, which are just highlighted here. Or what I'm going to do is I'm going to click right uh, with a right click and then I choose copy link address. And then we're going to be going back to R and using this to download this file. Now that you got the link to the global uh, 2020 uh, human settlement layer, I pasted this link right here. It's quite long, but what we're going to do next is we're going to define our URL object using this link. And then we're going to turn this link into a string so that R can use it to download it. The next thing is we're going to fetch the file name from this link and that is very easy. We can just use a base name and then pass URL here. 
And then finally, we will download also this file using download file function. So here we need to provide URL, which equals to URL, which we just defined. The pathway is going to be our working directory where we will actually download uh, this file. And then finally, the name of the destination file is going to be this file a name that we just defined. Okay, so we successfully downloaded the file and now we can load it into R. But the first thing is to actually unzip this file. So we can use unzip from base R and we can just pass this file name that we previously defined. Now we will have actually our raster file, but the next thing is how to load it into R. So the easiest way would be to actually refactor this file name. This is how we're going to do that. We're going to be using gsub from base R, which is used for manipulating strings. What we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this dot zip file uh, part the extension and then we're going to add dot tip to the end of our file name okay and then we have the roster name and the final thing is uh, simply to uh then do this use terra and then use rust here function from terra and just pass this roster name which is going to load then at the global population layer Okay, our first step is to get the subnational boundaries of Germany and then using some statistics calculate the total population for each of those uh, provinces. So the first thing is to call geodata here. And the cool thing about geodata is that it has this GADM uh, function, which is basically global administrative uh, boundaries and allows you for any country to fetch national boundaries. So uh, in essence, you can use this method to fetch the population for uh, the subnational level for any country in the world. So here, what you need to define, first of all, is the ISO 2 code of the country that you need. In our case, Germany uses uh, DE, uh, ISO 2 code. Second one is the level. So here I take the level two, which uh, are basically uh, one level below the German state level. So that would be, I think, municipalities. Another thing is for some countries, maybe there won't be the second level here. So pay notice to that. In that case, just use level equals one. And finally here, you need to also define the pathway uh, where this uh, object is gonna go to. Now, speaking of the object, this object is not in the SF format. So we will need to coerce it using ST as SF from the SF package. Now that we have um, these administrative boundaries of Germany at level two, we can finally do uh, the zonal statistics. So we're actually gonna calculate here and store values in the population column that we will just be creating. And then we're gonna call exact extract R and its function exact extract. And first of all, we're gonna pass here this top roster. Uh, that's gonna be the first argument. The second argument is over which we wanna calculate uh, the roster values. So we wanna calculate over this country object. And the final one is the method that we're gonna be using. So we wanna sum up all the population values over a certain uh, municipality boundary. We'll be fetching emissions data from EDGAR, which is emissions database for global atmospheric research, and it's coming from uh, the European Commission. So this one uh, is actually uh, one which we used in one of the previous tutorials. And this time what we're gonna do is play with a new version, which is version eight, which goes all the way from 1970 to 2022. So we need to here uh, click on this first link for greenhouse gases. And uh, when we click on this link, it's going to take us to the new level where we will see uh, actually the description of, of this uh, data set. So I encourage you to take a look what actually it means uh, or just go back to one of the previous tutorials where we covered this. And then what we're going to do here is go to the annual grid maps. So this is where we're going to be fetching our data. And because we're interested in uh, CO2 emissions, we have two options. Either we go for the CO2 emissions, like totals, or we go to the CO2 bioemissions. So we're just gonna go and click on this uh, second link, which is gonna open us then a new window where you can actually choose what you wanna download in terms of the time series and also in terms of the format. So over here, what we're gonna do here, we're gonna go for the net CDF uh, or NC format, and we're gonna go for emissions. So that's the third one. So we click on this and then here what we can choose is the period so we can just go navigate down and you can choose anything i think uh, between 2020 and the latest one 2022 because our uh, latest population data is for 2020. so i'm going to go ahead and uh, choose this one 2022 so what you can do here is either download this zip uh, file or what you can do what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, right click on this download 
uh, button and I'm gonna copy link address and then I'm gonna be using that back in R to download this file. So I pasted here that URL, which uh, leads to the CO2 uh, totals for 2022. And as you can see here, it has a zip extension. So we will need to download it now and then uh, unzip it and then load it into R. So the first thing here is to define this object as U. Uh, again, put strings around it uh, or put quotation, double quotation mark to turn it into string. And then uh, once again, we can use here download file from base R. So for the URL equals U for um, the path, uh, we're going to be getting here the working directory, so get working directory. And then the final one is the destination file name. It's going to be basically uh, base name and then you. If I then run a list files, it will enlist all the files and folders in my working directory. And as you can see, we have here a zip file that we downloaded. So this is the Edgar version 8 totals for CO2 emissions. And then number two is what we unzipped. Now, this is actually a folder, this is not a file, so we would need to actually explore what is inside this folder. I'm gonna copy it here, I'm gonna go back to this list files, and then for the path, I'm actually gonna say here, construct actually a pathway, where I'm gonna start off with the working directory, then I'm gonna add slash here to continue this, this, uh, this path, and then finally, I'm going to add here uh, this uh, name of this folder. And then what I'm going to do next is simply rerun this list file with a new pathway. Uh, and this is going to show me what is inside of this folder. So there is a readme.html and then there is this nc file. All right, so now we actually have the pathway and we also have now the name of this file that we want to load. So we can actually go ahead and pass uh, actually this to uh, Terra. So I'm going to call this object CO2. And I'm gonna then use Terra Rust. And then what I'm gonna do here is uh, what we use here, plus the name, of course, of, of this, uh, you know, of this, this NC file. And this is actually gonna help us then provide the, the, correct, the correct pathway to, uh, for Terra. So then when we actually run this, this whole chunk, this will load into Terra the raster file, and then we can immediately also inspect it. Again, this is a global file. So you can see here a Spets raster spanning the whole globe. And here, very important, so these are emissions totals, and they're measured in tons. One last computation step is to calculate the CO2 emissions per capita, and we can do that by running another zonal statistics. This time, we'll be using CO2 global raster, as our starting point and then again the country polygons to calculate the total sum of a CO2 emissions per German province. So let's go ahead here and again call country and then let's create a new field here which is going to be called sum uh, underscore CO2 and then again we're going to call to rescue exact extract R and its exact extract function. So as we said, the first argument is going to be now CO2. The second one is going to be country, so over which we're going to compute zone statistics. And again, we want to sum up all the values of CO2 emissions for each of these uh, subnational units. So that's why we are using here again sum. Now with information on the CO2 emissions per the subnational unit, as well as its population, and stored in the country object, we can now calculate CO2 emissions per capita. This is how we're going to do that. We're going to be using country here. And then we're going to be constructing here CO2 underscore PC, where PC is simply a shorthand for per capita. And then again, calling here country uh, and then uh, using sum S uh, or CO2 and then dividing by country uh, and then here population. We're ready to do our visualization and we'll be using ggplot2 from Tidyverse to do that. The first thing we will do here is define our plot theme, colors, and also breaks. We're going to start off with a theme. I'm going to define a theme. And uh, also in one of the previous tutorials I defined, I call it theme for the win. I really like this. It gives uh, Victor's mentality. And then we're going to create this as a function. So the first thing we're going to pass to this function is theme void from uh, ggplot2, which is basically going to just get rid of uh, a lot of access things. But then we would like to customize certain things. So I'm just going to add this here. And one of the things that would be really cool to add is, for example, the position of our legend. So legend dot position. And I'm going to actually put the legend uh, on the top. 
So that's why I'm uh, here declaring that legend equals top. Then I can define some other things related to legends. For example, I can define the legend uh, title. So the legend title in the dictionary of ggplot2 is text. So we need here to tell ggplot2 that this is element text. Now within this one, we can define several things. First of all, for example, size, we can go for nine pixels. Then we can also go for the color of the title. So for example, we can go for, let's say charcoal gray. Um, there are also other things that we can define, you know, how this is positioned or not. But for now, I think this is fine. We can also define here a legend text as well. So I'm just gonna paste this one here and just rename this uh, with legend text. We can actually keep pretty much the same things here. So that's totally fine. Another thing that we can define are plot margins, and this is what I really like to do often when I'm working with ggplot2, because ggplot2 often produces this, you know, margins on the sides, but there's some kind of a white uh, spot. I like to shrink that. So what I like to do here, I use margins, then here I de define the sides of the plot. So zero here I use for the top side, meaning that I don't want to uh, shrink it or expand it. I just want to keep it as is. Uh, and then also for the right hand side, uh, I also define it as zero, the bottom hand side as well zero, and then uh, finally for the left hand side uh, again zero. If you want to shrink, you can here also choose negative values and you can wrap it up here with the type of, of your units. Um, okay, so this is one thing that I wanted to define, so theme. Uh, another thing that is uh, useful for us is, as I said here, colors, right? Colors. So I want some kind of minions colors, and for that I can use HCL colors from a Bazaar. So HCL colors works in the following way. First of all, define a number of breaks. Let's say, for example, we want five. And then you define the palette that you want to use. And one of them that I want to use is the Inferno palette. And I also want to say here that reverse equals true, meaning that I would like darker colors to be associated with higher values of CO2 per capita and lighter values to be associated with lower values of CO2 emissions per capita. Finally, I'm going to define this as false. Now, one thing that is pretty useful here is to increase, for example, the number of pallets. And you can do that using another base R uh, function, which is called, called color ramp pallet. So since we already have calls here, what we need to do is pass calls here and then just define here, for example, how many new, you know, colors you want to see. Let's say, for example, 64. All right. Now we have both the colors and the theme for our plot. The last thing is to define the breaks. The breaks, we can use class in package, which we uh, also installed and loaded at the end, which gives you uh, pretty nice breaks here because it operates with natural intervals. So it follows actually the structure of your data. And from this one, we can use class intervals function. Uh, here, what you need to pass is the column from your object that you're going to be using. So from this country object, we're going to be passing here uh, CO2 per capita or PC. The second thing is the number of breaks that you want to define, let's say, for example, six. And then finally is the style. So I would like to have equally spaced, uh, equally spaced uh, numbers based on my data so that the legend also looks nice. And then the final thing is getting the breaks uh, from this list of objects. Okay, we are ready to create our map. And the first thing I want to do here is define the coordinates reference system I'll be using for uh, the map of Germany, which is the Lambert conical projection. Of course, if you're using a non-European country, you actually don't need to define this and you can skip the part where I'll be using this coordinates reference system to reproject our uh, country shape file. All right, so now that we have this, we can go ahead and write the code that will generate our map. We will first of all call uh, ggplot. The second thing is to call our one and only layer, which is in the asset format. And this is why I'm using here GMSF. Then for the data, I'm passing here the country object. And then here we do have our main aesthetics. So that's why I'm using AES to define the main aesthetic. And this is um, filling the polygons with the value. So that's why aesthetics here is fill. And the value for that is CO2 underscore PC. Of course, I can also, for example, put the color here of the provincial lines as well. But I choose here to maybe go for something like color equals to, let's say, white but I can even go maybe for a darker color, but let's say just white, uh, because the background is also gonna be white. And I can also choose here, maybe also the thickness of the line, let's say 0.15. Okay, so this was one and only layer that we had. 
the main aesthetics layer. Now we can go ahead and customize a bit our plot. The first thing is we want to assign here uh, colors or the palette that we previously created. So I'm going on here with scale field gradient uh, because we have continuous value, uh, values here. The first thing I'm going to define here is the title of the legend. So I'm just going to say here tones per uh, capita. I could also go tones per person, but capita sounds very fancy, so I'm just going to go for that. For the colors here, we're going to pass the pal palettes that we previously created. And then for the breaks, for the breaks, we already have the breaks, but our breaks are coming in the form of decimal places. So they have decimal places. So I'm just going to go ahead and round them. I'm going to round them to zero places of breaks and then also passing here zero. And then also for the labels, I'm pretty much going to do the same thing. So for the labels, I'm also going to round here the breaks and they're going to have zero decimal places. I can also define the NA value here. Uh, if I want, and for example, the any value can be Y. It can also be gray or whatever, but they're not going to be any value. So we will be calculating for each of the subunits. So that's the first thing that, that we are defining here. Uh, the second thing is we can also define a bit here how the legend is going to look like, how is it going to be positioned, etc. So the first thing we need to do here is to say what is the main aesthetic that we'll be using for the creation of a legend. In our case, that is the fill. And then because we want to create here uh, a legend which is based on continuous values, we need to use here guide color bar and then open the brackets and only then we define things. And one of the things that I want to define here is direction. I would like the legend to be horizontal. So it's going to be at the top, it's going to be horizontal. And then I can also define here bar width and bar height. So for bar width, I can go, for example, with 12 millimeters and then with bar, bar height, because here we are working with a horizontal legend, I'm going to make it a bit uh, thinner. So let's say, for example, 0.5. Um, the next thing is to define the coordinates reference system that I'll be using. Again, if you're not here transforming into a new coordinate reference system, you can just omit this part. But if you're using this for another European country, go ahead and define it. So as we said, CRS underscore a Lambert. And then the very last part here is simply passing our theme for the win. And this is how you do CO2 emissions per capita for any country in the world. I'm really curious, guys, how you take this tutorial on a journey across the world and create some really awesome visualizations for your country of interest. If, however, you're interested in replicating today's analysis, I prepared the link to the GitHub repo in the description box below. So do check it out. Feel free to modify, reuse it as you see fit. If you have any questions, comments, or just general feedback, feel free to reach out to me here on YouTube, but also on Instagram and X. If you're new to R and you seek to expand your data visualization and geospatial knowledge of R, I prepared a few cool tutorials for you, so do check them out. See you next time.